Brothers and sisters in Christ, the season of Lent is gradually going by. I pray and hope that we are all making use of this season to deepen our relationship with God and our neighbor. Today is the third week in Lent. So if for the past two weeks, if since Ash Wednesday, you have not set to work in all earnestness, I want to encourage you by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, continue to make this Lent a special season for yourself. The readings we just listened to are so rich but permit me to reflect with you on four points. One from the first reading and the rest from the gospel reading. The first reading from Exodus 17 is telling us about how the, Israels, the Israelites reacted in the face of human need. They had no water, and then they complained. Brothers and sisters, they faced a difficulty. They faced a test. How did they react? Every test, every difficulty, every challenge that we face can either make us better off or worse off, depending on how we approach it. Every difficulty or every test that we face can make us better off or worse off. It all depends on our attitude. Listen to the reading again. And you will see the attitude with which the Israelites were approaching this difficulty. What were they saying? They were telling Moses, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So tell me, what was their attitude? How were they approaching this? Did they see it as a moment that it can become better off and grow in their relationship with God? Or for them, it was not that. But my dear friends, if, if, if we would not even think of their complaint here, just go back. This was the same people that when Pharaoh was chasing them and he was just about to conquer them, through God's instrumentality, the sea split into two. You remember? And yet here they were, they still wanted to be in Egypt. They could not focus on what God had done, the mighty works of God and see that a God who has done this for us and spared our life can do even greater more. Just after that incident, you, you would go and then you would see that each time they faced any difficulty, the first thing they would do was to grumble. In Exodus 15, 16, they would even tell Moses, if you had left us in Egypt, we have been sitting by pots of meat and good food, cucumber, everything, and enjoying our life. And here you have brought us to just suffer and die. All because they were still thinking of Egypt. My dear friends, 
are they too different from us? Sometimes we can make the past so glorious that we ignore the many ways God blesses us. And at the slightest challenge, we're only thinking still of the past. We are not ready to embrace the present moment and head on into the future. But God has so designed it that no faith grows unless it goes through the crucible. It goes through the time of testing. So the season of Lent gives us that opportunity to reflect deeply on our lives and how we react to the challenges and the tests which come our way. Whether we embrace them with belief, knowing that like we heard in the second reading, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts. So that is my first point for a reflection. Now let's go into the gospel reading. The story of the Samaritan woman. And there, just reflect on where the incident took place. It was at a well. And the first point I want to make for your reflection is that divine providence always has a way of making glorious purposes out of incidents that may just be fortuitous or accidental. Divine providence will always have a way of making glorious purposes out of incidents that may just be fortuitous, that accidental. What do I mean? This woman just wakes up. She has no slave or servant to go to the well, so she goes to the well herself, going to fetch water, and there whom does she meet? She meets Jesus. There are many instances where things happen at the well. Do you remember one of them in the Old Testament? Rebecca met who? Rebecca met the servant who was asked to go and look for a wife for Isaac at the well. Not just that. Moses in Exodus chapter 2 would also help the daughters of Laban and would find Zipporah as a wife. Jacob will also make, meet Rachel at the well. But my emphasis here is not so much about the well itself, but about all these women would set out going about their activities. And then divine providence makes something glorious out of it. And that is my prayer for you. That even as you go about your daily activities, may divine providence make something beautiful out of them for you. But friends, it would also mean that you must go about those activities in a very purposeful manner. Not just with an attitude of laziness or I don't care or anything. Because of something special about how these women went about the activities. If you go home, read those stories. And you see that something made them stand out. No wonder divine providence made something beautiful out of it. So if you are working, work well. You remember the shepherds? The shepherds were just about the activity taking care of the flock by night. Then, divine providence smiles on them. And what happens? They became 
harbingers of the birth of the Messiah. That is one part of the conversation. The second part is that if divine providence must use you to bring about that glorious moment for somebody, please don't be an obstacle. Sometimes people have suffered in their professional lives, not because divine providence doesn't want to smile on them, but just because of a particular boss they had. So in this season of Lent, if you are the kind of boss or you know any boss who is being a hindrance to the divine plan of God in somebody's life, tell the person to change. Because that is what Lent is all about. A call to repentance. Don't stand in the way of divine providence and somebody's professional life. My third point. When Jesus asked for water from the woman, the woman said, why are you asking me for water? You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. And Jews and Samaritans had nothing in common. Friends, this is the time of Jesus. And this feud between the Jews and the Samaritan started after 57 BC. So centuries have passed and that feud has been passed on from one generation to the other. That even in the time of Jesus, there was still a feud. The Samaritans, according to the Jews, were not pure-blooded Jews. Historically, yes. The Samaritans were worshipping on a mountain, Mangezerim. The Jews said God can only be worshipped in Jerusalem. And they would have nothing to do with one another. You remember even at a point when Jesus wanted to pass through a Samaritan village, they didn't allow him. But my point here is this. How come that we perpetuate fields and prejudices and biases which did not originate from us started centuries ago between tribes and ethnic groups but we are still perpetuating them. Don't we do it? Sometimes don't we fall into that same trap? We do. But Jesus gives us a strategy. He doesn't engage the woman on those terms. We can say he even slighted the argument, ignored the bias, but engaged her on the merits of what she had to offer. And by the end, this woman who didn't even want to give her the water or him the water was asking questions, left the system there. She left the system there. So let us, let us, let us, in this season of Lent, work through our differences. We don't have to engage in arguments about them, but let us work such that by how we work together, those differences would not even matter. The whole village would welcome Jesus because of this woman's testimony and would even ask Jesus to stay with them. So what happened to the prejudice? If, if you won't even share water together, would they allow you to sleep there? No. But here we see it happening. Our lives will be beautiful as Ghanaians if we all work towards 
addressing issues of ethnic biases, prejudices, and anything that divides us. So that when we sing, God bless our homeland, Ghana, it is one voice and one heart that we sing our anthem. My final point is to let you know the gradualness with which this woman's faith grew. When he sees Jesus, he refers to him as a Jew. Then as the conversation goes on, he says, are you greater than Jacob? Then he says, you must be a prophet. And finally, what does he say? The Messiah, the Christ. He said, when I know that Messiah comes, Jesus says, I am he. So you see how that engagement with Jesus started from one point, but ended with a true recognition of who Jesus was. Friends, that is the journey of faith. That when you encounter Jesus, he moves you from one step to the other till you come to appreciate who he is as your Lord and Savior. And that is why the season of Lent gives us the opportunity to work through our faith, through prayer, so that we can all understand and appreciate who Jesus is for us. The Messiah who will be slaughtered on Good Friday but will resurrect on Easter Sunday. So as we go through this week, please reflect on these four points. How we handle every test which comes our way will either make us better or worse off. It all depends on our attitude and the faith with which we bring to the issue at stake. Second, divine providence can always work out glorious purposes through incidents which may just look like something accidental. And if you must be the one that divine providence should use, don't stand in the way of God. Three, let us all work through our biases and our prejudices. Sometimes even ignore them, but show through working together that the same blood which flows from Christ is the blood which is running through our vein. And that is what must unite us every day. And lastly, make progress in your relationship with Jesus. That is how the woman came to see her, him as the Messiah. May Jesus, whom we would adore and receive today in Holy Communion, bless and make our week fruitful. Amen.